A common question that I get asked a lot is if I should go to a Caribbean medical school. So I decided I'm gonna make a video that addresses just that. And the video is gonna be more for if you got accepted to a Caribbean medical school or you're you know, essentially very serious about you know, going to um, make, that, make that jump and transition. Okay, so going to Caribbean medical school is a, it's, a, it's really a double-edged sword. Okay, A, you get the opportunity to get your medical degree, all right? It's a fair opportunity. Now, I say that because you have to keep in mind that it is a huge, huge business in many respects. It's a huge business. They're in the business of taking a lot of students, okay? that may not have gotten into an American school from the get-go. And they take, they take all of those students, more than they can place, mind you, every semester, and they weed them out, okay? This has been a practice that's been going on for, for a while. And the most recent numbers that I've uh, got reported back to me uh, was somewhere upwards of 500 students getting accepted in one class, okay? The term one cl class. And that's pretty ridiculous, okay? That's a, that's a huge number, and matching that many students is not going to be easy feat. And they really do care a lot about the statistics. And what, what I mean by that is how many uh, students match, the percentage of matches every year going into whatever specialty, um, that, that number has to be, you know, good for them. And that generally is, you know, um, you know, in the high nineties. Okay. But you got to bear in mind, um, they give you that opportunity. Now, on the other hand of things, the, the other side is that it is a lot of work. Okay. Now, when you go to a Caribbean medical school, a couple of things that you have to change about yourself is your discipline okay and and you know you have to be just laser focused when you go there as soon as you get off the airplane and you know you settle in and everything first day of class hits your goal is to destroy the classes you're, you're trying to score as high as you can because at the end of those two years that you're there okay on on the island you have to take the first USMLE exam okay and now this series of exams literally it will open a door or shut it straight in your face, okay? Granted, there's so many other things on your CV that can help you out when you come when it comes on time to apply for residencies and whatnot, but the one of the biggest factors is the USMLE exam, okay? The step one, step two uh, examinations, okay? Um, and I'm not gonna touch on, you know, I'll probably maybe later down the road if, um, I have the time to make some more videos about other aspects of applications and whatnot. But I'm specifically talking, if you want to go to Caribbean medical school, keep in mind that you have to work really hard. And when you go there, you have to have the intent that I am going to absolutely ace these classes and, and destroy the USMLE exam. And it's been creeping up. The minimum score has been creeping up every, um, every year or so, I believe, you know, and I think the passing score right now is 194, it used to be a 189 before that. And who knows what it's going to be eventually because the strict competition and, and all this uh, nonsense that's going on, it, it, it's getting harder and harder for, for uh, IMGs. And you have to keep in mind, you're going to be an IMG. Even if you're a US citizen, you graduated from, from a Caribbean medical school, so you're going to be an international medical graduate. Okay, and all that is gonna the stigma, all that you know, it's not as big as people make it out to be. That oh, you went to Caribbean medical school, it's not that big of a deal, especially during clinicals because your school has affiliations and and everything, and and a lot of program directors that uh that I know, and people in residence and everything like that. Very common that to find someone that graduated from one of the Caribbean medical schools. Okay. So don't worry too much about stigma. Uh, the only thing that I have to warn you about, and I've said this so many times so far, is that you have to do well on the examinations, okay? And before you get in, 
after you get accepted, whatever, you have to check out all of your bad habits of studying. Procrastination or, you know, uh, just not studying effectively, whatever it is. If you're, if you're an average student in college, you have to make some serious changes to when you go to the medical school because, it, and that goes for everybody, but in particular for the Caribbean students, because you have that added pressure on your shoulders, you have to perform. Okay, and that that's what I that's what I have to say. If you can perform, you can outshine the other students with that high high score on the USMLE Step One. Most likely, you'll be okay, but it's easier said than done. All right, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, obviously, later down the road, I might make more questions about residency matching or tips for clinicals. But when you're on the island for two years, you are on lockdown, okay? You're gonna be, you know, in your little uh, jail cell that is your dorm room or library, wherever. You're not gonna go out, you're gonna study, okay? You're not gonna go to the beach or anything like that, whatever the case is, you know, it, it, you of course you can have fun after exams, you know? Study hard and then you can play later, okay? And that's something that a lot of people have trouble um, getting hold of. But hopefully that won't be you because you're going to put yourself in a really difficult situation. As I said, they weed students out. They'll take, as I've heard, about 500 students or more. And not all of them are going to get past the first semester, second semester. You know, they're going to start weeding hard. And all those students are going to be in debt. And, you know, you're going to be cut with essentially nothing. Yeah, they gave you the opportunity. A fair opportunity, albeit. But I'm here to give you that forewarning that it comes at a steep cost. So you have to perform well. And I hope you do. All right. And um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. All right. Until next time, good luck.